Hello friends, James Stevenson back with another uh, episode of Who's Hating Hard on Tesla Today, uh, a series in which I go through and show you what the other side of the trade is thinking. Yep, that's what this is about. So let me share my desktop with you and I'll just share with you my screen. I've got Twitter pulled up here. And this is a tweet that I sent out September 26th. They said, this day in Tesla Q history, the more things change, the more they stay the same. So on September 27th of 2019, I sent out this demand cliff definition. Uh, so the N here means noun, as you would see in a dictionary entry. The expected future Tesla Q high holiday, after which car buyers will no longer want to purchase the best vehicles available. Despite its failure to appear as foretold in 2012 through 2018, Tesla Q acolytes have repeatedly renewed their faith that it will occur next quarter. Uh, the demand cliff is always coming next quarter, not this quarter. This quarter, there's still a, uh, an order backlog, but next quarter, the backlog will be gone. Uh, the growth story will be over. The competition will come. Uh, these are the fervent religious beliefs of the Tesla Q religion. So I got a reply to that from Deep Crates at Hold the Relish on Twitter. Uh, I think this is a longtime Tesla hater. I, I don't have as good a recall on what this account has done over the years. Uh, well, this time there's at least a more legitimate argument. Legitimize. Uh, there are com there are comparable EVs. Uh, I do worry about demand, especially out of China. All right. So uh, Hold the Relish says there are comparable EVs. So I ask, which competitor would you say offers the most clearly superior EV ownership experience? All right, so if the, if the demand cliff is coming and uh, if, uh, you know, car buyers will no longer want to purchase the best vehicles available, they're going to trade down to some inferior EV made by a competitor. Okay, if, if that's not going to happen, then which competitor is making a better vehicle? When, when people go to buy a Tesla and they compare it against what else is available, what other option is clearly superior, right? Who is winning in the, the marketplace um, when people are going to buy a Tesla, evaluating it based on whatever their criteria are? Safety, performance, styling, technology, features... Uh, charging network, uh, efficiency, wh whatever the factors are that people are looking for, who's beating Tesla on all those? Uh, does it have to be clearly superior? Maybe people want to buy an inferior product. Uh, just several uh, descent choices, decent choices, somewhat cheaper or with some aggressive advertising to chip away. Look at this Equinox EV coming out. I'd guess they would sell a lot of previous Equinox owners. Of course, given GM can actually make them, uh, I said, you're not doing a great job selling it as a clearly superior uh, offering. And, uh, <laughs> well, nothing is, but my question is, does it have to be? And I would say, I would say Tesla can't sell more than they're making, <laughs> right? You can only deliver cars that have been produced. So as long as Tesla is making enough vehicles to supply the people who want to buy the best vehicle available, uh, there's not going to be any problem. So then uh, Grant Belden jumps in. Uh, plus one to, to this idea, does it have to be? Competition isn't just, is this the absolute best car available? Well, no, uh, not everyone can buy the best car available. Tesla has a market share of like one, one and a half percent of the total market right now, and the other 98.5% of the market has to buy something else because there aren't more Teslas to sell into the market. Uh, Grant says, James doesn't understand someone claiming Ferrari slash Lamborghini have competitors in the ICE market. Uh, I said, Grant, did you just admit that nobody offers a clearly superior EV ownership experience to Tesla? I mean, that's what this sounds like. Well, do, does there have to be uh, a better vehicle available for EV buyers than a Tesla? Sounds like Grant's saying um, that there aren't any. Uh, Grant says, no, I agreed with Deep, uh, being Deep Crates, hold the relish, that you're missing the point. 
Uh, even if no one did, Tesla will be impacted by new market entrants. I don't understand how you can't see that. Well, when he says new market entrants, Grant means um, Volkswagen selling some EVs and less internal combustion engine vehicles. That's not really a new entrant, is it? Tesla has been competing against internal combustion engine vehicles, not against electric vehicles. Uh, so I said I recorded three videos this morning explaining why, back on September 26th, a week ago. Uh, my Patreon supporters have access to them already. You can watch them when I make them public. Grant said, uh, let's say Lambo has the most superior ICE customer experience. According to you, they have no competition. Why or how, if Mercedes makes a fleet of cars that are 90% as good at 75% of the price, that's an incredible, potent form of competition. I said, I'm sorry, are you under the impression that I think Tesla will become the only seller of automobiles? Um, because that, 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 that's what this is saying. Uh, he's saying, hey, Tesla won't sell all the vehicles. Other companies will sell some of them. Well, yeah. <laughs> Tesla's not going to become the only automaker. There, there are some bulls who think that Tesla will become the only automaker. Uh, that seems like an extremely remote possibility. Uh, all Tesla needs to take is, you know, I mean, te Tesla's very profitable now. Tesla's the most profitable automaker already per vehicle sold. They're just going to continue to take more and more of the total market share, forget the EV market share, uh, and grow uh, earnings and, and be the, uh, the most profitable automaker in the world very soon. Uh, so uh, Grant says, no, you ask a lot of irrelevant questions. So I tried a different tack. I said, more irrelevant questions for you. Does Apple worry about the competition? Does Google worry about the competition? Does uh, Louis Vuitton worry about the competition? Why or why not? Uh, so uh, Grant says, Apple and Google less so. Louis Vuitton, absolutely. Well, uh, this is the company that sells, you know, uh, Fendi and Hennessy and 60 other premium brands that are priced at the top of the market. Right. They sell the best. Uh, nobody makes better, more expensive products uh, than Louis Vuitton at scale. Uh, so I, I listed them as an example because they do not have to worry about competing against low priced competitors who are at, uh, uh, racing to the bottom uh, in the value conscious demographic. Tesla does not target the value-conscious demographic. Uh, the, the people who are shopping based on purchase price, initial purchase price, that's not Tesla's market, right? Uh, so Grant says network effects. Uh, ballsy to compare a car company to any of these, though. Uh, just another car company, eh? Like Apple's just another struggling smartphone maker. Google's just another company trying to sell some online ads. Louis Vuitton, just another scrappy little fashion company. It'll click eventually. Meditate on the word earnings. Earnings are what matter to investors. Uh, Grant said Apple and Google are as profitable as they are precisely because you can't name five struggling smartphone makers or search engines. Okay, so you can't name, you know, Google Pixel and LG and Samsung and uh, Huawei and... Uh, uh, whatever the fifth one is that I should have been able to come up with to list off five. Network effects, like I said, stop deflecting with these questions uh, that you think make you look smart. Uh, so I, I had to respond more directly. Apple has many competitors, but owns most of the industry's earnings. Google has many competitors, but owns most of the industry's earnings. Louis Vuitton has many competitors, but owns most of the industry's earnings. So Grant said, cool, I'm going to sit this out until you feel like making actual points rather than talking like this or in questions. Th those were actual points, uh, but uh, I had to try again. Apple, Google, and Louis Vuitton each offer a clearly superior customer experience. Their brands are the first ones that come to mind for buyers who can afford the best. Referencing the, the meme at the very top of this thread. 
they don't own most of the unit or revenue market share, but they do own most of the industry's earnings. This, this is what you want when you invest in a company. You want earnings growth. Uh, Google is the first brand that comes to mind for buyers that can afford the best. Well, yeah. Who's buying from Google? Advertisers. What do advertisers want? The best. They want the best search engine optimization. They know that most people are using Google as their preferred search engine, and that's where they need to be. They have to pay whatever Google wants for ad placements. When you, when you run a search on Google, the first links that show up at the top, sponsored links, are coming from companies that are paying Google, which is how Google makes their revenue and their earnings, selling online ads. Uh, you'd do well to stop attempting to lump these three together. There are significant differences between each. Well, yeah, but you saw, you saw the similarities, right? I couldn't have made it a lot more clear. Uh, I get it. Some other companies have good margins, so something, something. Of course, Tesla can also have good margins. Tesla has good margins already. Tesla's margins are already world-class, and that will continue uh, being true in future years. Uh, for the third or fourth time, Apple and Google have significant network effects, which drive significant profitability. He's talking about they have uh, a big installed base of customers. They have a loyal customer following, and people don't want to switch away from those brands because they feel like they have too much invested in this company. And uh, so it's, it's high barriers to uh, exiting a relationship with that company. What network effects does Tesla have? So uh, here I am uh, uh, replying with Tesla, uh, Tesla buyer loyalty is I'm guessing, do you want to get another EV? I mean, they've had one. So, Listen to this. When a Tesla household returns to market and they decide they want to get another EV, and frankly, most Tesla households, I'm guessing, do want to get another EV. I mean, they've had one, they're EV conscious, and they get another EV. 95% get a Tesla. Oh my that, gosh. That, that, that's that's just a mind blower. Listen to this. Yeah. So uh, th this, these are not Tesla fanboys. This is automotive news. Uh, a panel of independent experts uh, reviewing market research data uh, conducted on buyers of all kinds of vehicles, reporting that the industry has never seen customer loyalty like Tesla buyers exhibit. So uh, Grant asks, do you know what a network effect is? So I tried again to hammer home my point about network effects with a different meme from me, this one from 2018. Uh, a quote from Elon talking to Marquez Brownlee here at MKBHD on YouTube. The thing we really focus on at Tesla is we put all of our money and attention into making the product as compelling as possible because I think really the way to sell any product is through word of mouth, which is free advertising. Actually, the key is to have a product that people love. Generally speaking, you know, if you're at a party or whatever, you talk about things that you love. If you like something, it's just okay. You don't really care that much. If people love it, you're going to talk. That generates word of mouth advertising. That's how our sales have grown. We don't spend any money on advertising or endorsements, right? So uh, this is Elon explaining how this dynamic happened. It was purposeful. It was by design. You make the product incredibly great, as Steve Jobs would say, and it's going to sell itself uh, without you needing to advertise in ways that people are skeptical of naturally. Uh, when you hear a testimonial from a person that you already know and like and trust saying this is the best product available, you believe it more than you would believe it if the same words had been uh, recorded in a TV commercial that you saw or printed in an ad somewhere, right? So uh, Grant says, okay, so no, you don't know what uh, uh, network effects are, lol. Here's my turn to be obnoxious which he, he did uh, commence with immediately, learn more about how business models and industries operate. So uh, I, I had to laugh at that and give it the reply it deserved. Uh, he says, I know you Googled it and are embarrassed behind this GIF, as you should be. 
legitimately incredible that you're charging people for your wisdom, citing Google and Apple as examples of what Tesla can be in the auto market, and don't know what a network effect is. Uh, and then he tagged Taylor Ogan, saying James doesn't know what network effects are. So uh, I had to reply. Uh, Grant Belden doesn't know that the outcomes of building industry-leading customer loyalty and word-of-mouth advertising are industry-leading revenue growth and more and more customers using the product every year, a growing customer base, loyal customers. This is how you achieve network effects. Uh, Taylor says, have you not been paying attention this whole thread? So I said, answer the man, Grant. Grant said, this is the chart that shows market share, right? Laughing. Uh, so yeah, it does. It shows market share. If, if you think about it, if, if you apply a little thought to what you're seeing here, this is market share growth. It's not units sold share of a subset of the market. It's actual important dollar amount growth. W which is more important, a percentage of EV market share or that you're growing your dollars of revenue that can be deposited in a bank account that, that become earnings if, if you're uh, able to achieve uh, 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 industry-leading profit margin, which Tesla has been doing. Um, so uh, I replied, one day you'll realize that Tesla's EV market share says more about other companies than it says about Tesla. The amount that Tesla's EV market share percentage falls tells you how good a job Tesla's competitors are doing at transitioning away from internal combustion engine vehicles to electric vehicles that people actually want to buy, right? It's a referendum on the competition. It doesn't tell you anything about what Tesla's doing. Tesla's growing as fast as they can. Uh, so Grant says, ah, the expert on network effects telling me I don't understand market share again. And I said, even after I've repeatedly told you, you don't get it, uh, referencing a different thread I had going with Grant. Uh, legacy automakers are transitioning away from combustion vehicles to EVs slower than Tesla would have liked. Tesla would prefer their share of the EV market to be lower. In the U.S., Tesla has 70 or 80 uh, percent market share most quarters. That's way more than Elon Musk would prefer. He would prefer that number to be way less than 50%. But it isn't because Tesla's competitors aren't doing a good enough job transitioning away from combustion vehicles. Uh, it's right there in the mission statement, but Tesla Q somehow does not understand this point at all. The mission of Tesla is to accelerate the world's transition to sustainable energy, and they can't do that if competitors don't make electric vehicles, right? Uh, so Grant says, no, we've been through it plenty. You cry about how their data isn't fair because Tesla has experienced unique supply chain issues, LOL. Then insist it's actually good that the data shows declining share because that's what Tesla wants anyway. What did I miss? Uh, this image you created to refute market share declines will always hold a special place in my heart as one of the boldest cherry picks I've ever seen. So what was he talking about here, crying about data not being fair? Well, He's looking at this number uh, and this number, right? Well, this number and this number are lower than the ones above them because in this quarter, 2022 Q2, Tesla's Shanghai Gigafactory was closed for a whole month and then forced to run at limited capacity, one shift per day, six days per week, for another four weeks, which cut in half or more uh, well, probably about half, the amount of vehicles they could ship out to the Chinese and European markets in that quarter, right? So uh, that's not crying and whining. That is explaining what happened. Um, and yeah, I did highlight on here, hey, this 18.1 and this 18.1 are kind of the same share in Europe uh, over this time period, and this 72 and that 73 are kind of the same, 72 and 73. All of these numbers are too high, though. Every number on this uh, USA column ought to be lower than it is if the competitors were doing their job. Uh, so Grant says, maybe this sort of thing works on your Patreon marks, but my god, man, you owe it to yourself to be better than this. 
I said, you think Q2 2022 when the government in Shanghai shut the factory down completely for four weeks and then it reduced capacity for another four weeks is a more fair comparison? See, I gave him the same information I just gave you. That's not a chip shortage or a supply chain challenge. I'm sorry you're having trouble with those. Uh, so Grant says, does Shanghai export to the U.S.? So he's talking about, hey, the number in the U.S. was lower too. All right, the number in the U.S. was lower too. Maybe the competition is finally doing their job a little better in the U.S. Again, it's EV market share. It doesn't matter. It's, it's trivia. Um, feel free to hit me with an actually it's good Tesla's EV market share is declining or a very loosely related question here. I'll understand what that means. Smiley face. So, uh, yeah, I said if you ask Elon Musk, he'll tell you he never wished for Tesla to take more than half of the U.S. EV market in terms of units sold. A figure that high reflects the failure of Tesla's U.S. competition to present North American car buyers with good EV options. Uh, Iron Man RS for me replied, Out of curiosity, does it not make more sense to view it as overall market share of car sales rather than by segment? As it stands, it's more like how fast is ICE losing ground versus BEVs gaining? If you look at ICE fall in sales versus uptick in BEVs, just a thought. Yeah, it's a good point here. If you look at Volkswagen, their total sales are decreasing year after year because they're selling way less ICE every year than they're increasing their electric vehicle sales by. Conversely, Tesla sells way more vehicles every year than they sold the year before with growth rates of 40% or better uh, almost every year, going back a long time. I replied, I wish I could convince Grant and Taylor to discuss the total market for new autos because the analysis becomes much more straightforward. They refuse to. They insist on talking only about Tesla's share of EV unit sales. Uh, so Grant replied, your only response to this point has been, actually Tesla wants to compete with millions of other EVs in the market and no amount of EV production from others can have any impact on Tesla, both of which are absurd. To which I replied, if you're going to expend the effort to use quotation marks, you might also save yourself the difficulty of rephrasing what I actually said, which was, quote, the amount of money Tesla makes is wholly disconnected from their EV market share, which is true. Tesla's earnings depend on Tesla's revenue and costs. And that's it right? What, what's happening in the rest of the EV market is trivia. It's what the, the rest of the non-Tesla market does. Grant said, yes, you've said that many times. Can you explain why? Maybe with an eye toward the counterpoints I quote tweeted above. I said, market share is a proxy for competitive intensity. That I'm quoting him. For pricing power, which drives margins. So that I'm going to um, critique that belief by saying total new car share would be a proxy for competitive intensity, but EV unit share, including microcars, is trivia, indicating mainly the failure of competitors to transition. Pricing power is a concept related to margins, but unrelated to market share. Strategic pricing reflects the value the market places on the product sold. Tesla has been selling more vehicles every year and recently been raising their prices to try to limit the order backlog so it doesn't stretch to multiple years, which would be, you know, untenable for most buyers' um, uh, order window. M most buyers don't have years to wait for a Tesla. So Tesla's been throttling that backlog down by increasing prices. Uh, Grant said, you'd learn something about pricing power pretty quick if I was the only one selling water in a desert. I just can't anymore. You've built tidy spreadsheets with good forecast accuracy for Tesla. Congrats. I don't think your business knowledge is particularly strong. From what I can tell, it's largely a function of what you've read about Tesla on the internet. I'm going to bed. Uh, so uh, he, he's making some wrong assumptions about me here. Uh, I have an undergraduate business degree. I have a graduate level business degree. Uh, and I have, you know, many years of experience uh, doing business analysis for Fortune 500 companies. So uh, I encouraged uh, Grant, stay curious, keep learning, reason less by analogy, and more from first principles. You'll find yourself making fewer wrong assumptions that way. Good luck to you. And Grant said, cool, find a skill set that isn't typing one stock on the internet. Ah, all right. 
So uh, that's who's Hayden Hart on Tesla today for this week. If you've enjoyed today's video, click the like button. If you're not subscribed to my channel, you could go ahead and subscribe to my channel and uh, ring the notification bell if you want to get alerts every time I post fresh videos to YouTube. And I will see you in the next one.